Hey everyone, we're here to talk about engineering for incoming students. I'm here with my friend Audrey and we're going to talk about engineering and talk about it in general. For starters, we're going to talk about why engineering? Why go into this? Um, engineering is a very good field because the coursework is very difficult in high school, but once you graduate, you have the opportunity to get jobs like straight out of high school. And these jobs are generally very well paying, like more well paying as a starting salary than business or, you know, your average biologist. And the job market is pretty dependable because everyone needs engineers to always be innovating. Why did you pick in particular your field of biomedical engineering? For me, bio I picked biomedical engineering because I've always been biologically inclined, but I didn't see myself going into bio because with engineering, it's more like instead of working in a lab, you get to work on applying your scientific knowledge. So you get to like create machines and stuff based on your biological knowledge and it also pays more than regular biology and i feel like with biology it's like not very specific but with biomedical engineering it's like very specific pathway into healthcare related jobs and also it's because i was pre-med and biomedical engineering also aligns with pre-med pretty well yeah i saw that biomed had like several tracks do you know which one you'd want to do I know there's like tissue, but I, I don't recall the other one. Yeah, um, I'm leaning towards tissue, but there's also biomechanics and biocomputational. Um, the good thing about engineering in general is that it's a lot more broad than you think it is. Like, I never thought I'd go into engineering because I've always been into biology, but there's like so much, there's so many different pathways of engineering. Okay, that's cool. I guess we're gonna follow it up with a juicy question that most engineering students coming in have. So how much of a social life do you have? I, I don't know how else to put this. Unfortunately, the downside of being engineer, an engineer is that you probably have less time to yourself to do fun things than your non-engineering peers. However, I know some people that are like joining sororities and they're biomedical engineers and they're chilling. For me, I like overloading myself and even then I still manage to like make friends. I don't go to parties and stuff because I'm not like a party person, but I have like friends on my dorm floor and we like play game nights with each other and sometimes we get in groups to study like so it's definitely possible to have a social life outside of engineering. That's cool. It's all about like I guess finding this balance of like work and friends, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I follow it up with what clubs are there for engineers and what which in particular have you took an interest to? Um there's actually an engineering barbecue in I think the first week or so of school, maybe the first month, I don't remember. But they not only do you get some good food, there's also like an engineering club fair. And there are at least like 20 clubs that there are, um, I don't particularly remember any specific club. There's like a club where you make a solar powered car, I think, which I thought was pretty cool. And there's also a club where you just 3D print things, which was also pretty cool. And there's a biomedical engineering club, which I'm interested in, but I'm sure there's also like an ECE or a mechanical engineering club. So they do some pretty cool things in clubs and they go to like competitions and etc. So it sounds very cool. It's more like definitely seems more like hands on than like other clubs per se. So for incoming students, what would you say to people interested in researching with professors? In I'd say keep your GPA up first. It's kind of difficult to get research for sure i personally got an off offer through arresti through the research assistant program even though i didn't get it through the summer program because they can only accept one student for the arresti through the arresti summer program they're able to accept multiple people through the arresti ra program 
And I recommend if you're looking for research opportunities to also try emailing. And if you're in any special programs like Riley Douglas Community or Honors College, and you also have other opportunities to do research, so take advantage of those. But you could also email your professor and make sure you keep up your grades because professors like to see grades. That's basically for the arrestee program at least the step before the interview and then after the interview they decide whether they'd want to work with you or not that for sure makes sense all right is engineering really that hard like coming straight out of high school yeah for sure um you have to love engineering in order to stick with it just to quantify like how hard engineering is compared to like other schools like sas for SAS, I think it's a 3.9 to 4.0 to get Kuma some laud, but for SOE, it's only 3.6 and above, 3.64 and above. So it's like you can see how low the standards are for SOE, but that's because the classes are like with SAS, you take a lot of grade booster classes like in the humanities because they have like different cores or whatever. But for SOE, they have a very strict path for you to take. You can see it in your major's handbook and a lot of the classes that you take for engineering are very difficult and a lot of people end up failing them. For example, like Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3. Also analytical physics, people tend to do very bad on, but that's okay because the curve usually balances it out. But yeah, engineering is a very stressful thing because you don't really know how well you do until the teacher curves it in the end and even then it, the curve might not be enough okay so following that what would you say would be like the retention rate or like the total dropout rate for like first year engineers I guess? um the dean said the dropout rate was over 50 percent and usually it's because these people don't come in they come into engineering for the money or they're not passionate about engineering, but that's very problematic because engineering coursework is very difficult. Even if you're good at like math and physics, it might not be worth considering engineering if you weren't willing to put in the effort because everyone else is also good at calc and physics. And it depends on how everyone else does, not just you per se. All right. So what if going in, I decide to be undecided for engineering? That is definitely okay. I have a lot of friends who are also undecided. And the good news is that first year for engineers, everyone takes about the same classes. So you're not taking any like major specific classes first year. You're taking your prereq classes. And one of your prereq classes is intro to engineering, which for most people, aside from honors academy, it's a chill one credit pass fail course and basically you listen to people talk about different engineering disciplines for example there's packaging engineering industrial and systems engineering biomedical engineering chemical engineering they all come and showcase why you should pick their major what fields or what routes they're taking and basically just show you their research and basically try to inform you about each different major so in the future you can pick whatever engineering discipline you feel most comfortable with and i think you have to decide by like a mid-april freshman year which is the second semester so you have time to decide i found package engineering pretty cool i saw that their placement was like 100 percent somehow I don't, I don't even know how that was possible. Yeah, packaging engineering is also known as one of the easiest engineering majors. And the good thing about Rutgers packaging program is that it's one of the only ones in the East Coast. And that's where there's like a high demand for it. So that's why it's 100% job placement rate. And the starting salaries are pretty good too. Yeah, and it actually seems like a pretty interesting job. Like, all right, so following up, where would you recommend dorming? engineer personally i dormed on college ave first year and that was okay for me but probably one of my bigger regrets was not being able to dorm on bush because the bus system is particularly 
unreliable at Rutgers sometimes and it takes an extra hour or so to go bus from one campus to another. First semester it's okay because you have classes like on every campus usually but generally engineers would want to dorm on Bush because most of their classes at least for me second semester are on Bush usually because that's where the engineering building is. Where would you recommend studying like some ideal study spots, I guess. Um, on Bush, I personally found it was really nice to be able to study in Richard Weeks Hall of Engineering. It's really like gorgeous, it's super clean. There's a lot of natural lighting. There are a lot of like empty tables usually, and it's right next to the student center. So you can go get takeout and then eat it in Richard Weeks Hall of Engineering. And another nice study spot I think on Bush would be the dining hall even though I guess it could get but it doesn't get that loud if you went to any other dining hall it'd be really loud but the Bush dining hall is so nice another nice study place would be the Cert. it also is pretty nice they're clean and I think they have a learning center there too so that's a bonus yeah I like studying in the quiet lounge on Bush student center except like it gets packed like immediately in the afternoon though but like if you secure a spot it's like pretty nice it's located where like you make the entrance to the student center and then at the reference deck you just make a right and then you just there should be like a quiet lounge just there next we're gonna ask so does your overall gpa matter or is it more like getting work experience in terms of overall i can't really say anything about the work experience it's probably very important but I, I think your biggest concern as a freshman is trying to have a good foundation for your GPA because I think if you don't have above a 3.2 or something, it's like very difficult to get into grad schools. And also, I think some high up tech companies screen their employee and their applicants so that they only interview the ones with a certain GPA. So I think anything higher than a 3.5 at least for freshman year, would be a good foundation for your GPA. But considering that Kuma Sod Law is only a 3.65, it's okay in engineering to have like a lower GPA. The ballpark is the average at SOE is like 2.7, which I recommend doing much better than. So yeah, GPA does matter to some extent, especially as a freshman, because that helps you get access to research opportunities. And etc would you say the cutoffs like three i guess for like wanting to perform i guess like ideal performance for sure i feel like three is very low because three would put you in the bottom like 25 percent i think i think you want to be at least like in the middle 50 percent or higher than that because you're competing for the same jobs as everyone else and especially for getting research opportunities like for resty a lot of the programs only look at your application for research if you if you have a 3.5 or above regardless of whether you're an engineer or not damn that's that's very unfortunate all right so how does overall scheduling work for engineering so the good thing with soe is that you have like a very specific path that you have to take to get your degree so if you look up whatever major you are for example for me i would look up biomedical engineer and then their handbook it shows you a four-year plan and basically if you take all those classes in that four-year plan every semester you're good to go to get a degree sometimes it says like elective humanities elective basically you can take any humanities class and it'll probably fit under humanities elective if you get permission from the dean of course but there's also a list of humanities electives that you can choose from and there's a lot of variety which is really nice if you're considering double majoring or a minor or etc and basically the way it is for semester is that the advisor picks all the classes for you and they tend to screw up your schedule so during the first week there's this thing called add drop and you can just move around all your classes SOE doesn't have an APA day so the advisors just put you in whatever classes that you really need and second semester it's different because you pick the classes yourself so basically 
depending on how many credits you have coming in to Rutgers. So it wouldn't be based on your credits fall semester, but it would be based on your AP credits. So if you have more than 15 AP credits, you would be able to register for classes a day earlier than everyone, which is super nice because engineering classes could get very competitive, especially with Corona and budget cuts. They reduce the number of sections for engineers for certain classes. The good news is you basically know all the classes you're taking for the next four years through the your major's handbook. So I'd imagine it'd be hard to study by yourself. So like, how, how do you go about it in terms of studying? Personally, for engineering classes, I would recommend studying by yourself in at least to some extent because studying with your friends can be very distracting. Like I understand, you know, going through your notes, comparing them, making sure they're pretty, you know, consistent. But for engineering classes like calculus and physics, it's not so much conceptual usually as problem solving, especially for engineering physics. You have to be able to apply those equations by yourself. And if you don't know how to apply them unless you're with someone else, then you'll just fail all the exams. And I feel like the reason why a lot of engineers fail is because they try to like memorize their coursework. But in actuality, what'll help you do well are taking practice problems and then eventually tests to gauge like how well you do and where your weaknesses are. Yeah, because engineering is compared to like other majors, engineering is very application based. So you should be able to apply your information instead of focusing on regurgitating that information. Is it just like mostly problems and then you just have to like read it through and just like solve it? Um, I would say like, go through your notes, read them a couple times, I don't know, test yourself on it. Once you know the notes, spend the majority of your time doing practice problems. If you cram everything the day before, you don't have a lot of time for doing practice problems, which is an issue because you honestly only learn from practice problems in engineering. Like, you don't really learn by talking to other people. I guess unless you're going through problems together, but even then it's better to work on problems by yourself to see if you actually know the information or it's your friend who's doing the problems for you. Having said that, would you say living in an LLC is pretty cool? An LLC, I wouldn't say like for academics, it's really beneficial for me. Having an LLC really benefited me in a social way because my LLC was like Douglas within the Honors College. So I was on a floor of all girls and we were very like similarly minded. And for me, it helped me find like a lot of friends who were as smart as I am and we would like study in groups and etc. And I got to like play around with them and I got to meet a lot of cool people. So I would say LLCs are definitely cool. For engineering, I know there's a, well, for engineering women, there's this LLC called the Riley Douglas LLC. And it's more than just an LLC because it also gives you more internship and research opportunities. And on top of that, I heard it's a really great community because you're on a floor of all female engineers. So you can find people to study with you and, you know, just like talk to them. I feel like being around people who you can talk to about coursework is really liberating because you're really nervous about an exam and you feel better when they're also nervous about the exam. It makes you feel like you're not the only one who feels like a little unprepared. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Gotta struggle together and then form bonds through that, I guess. Thanks for tuning in and as always, don't forget to be awesome and take care.